Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 Fellows Program. My name is Joe Mernick and I was the Graduate Fellow Representative for this summer. And today I'll be speaking on the 2020 Lane and Judea Fellowship Program, or as I've been calling it, the Summer of Resilience. So a little background on myself. I graduated from Northland College in 2016 where I was studying rainbow smelt around Lake Superior. I then kicked it around Vilas County for about a year while working at the Escanaba Lake Research Station before heading west to South Dakota State University where I earned my master's degree in 2019. And there I was studying the federally endangered pallet sturgeon. So last summer was my first summer within the PhD program at UW-Madison Center for Limnology. And while here, my research interests are uh, chiefly focused on fish ecology. And more importantly to me, because it's one of my passions, is really applying this uh, fishery science method to help solve management problems. And I really look forward to having uh, the applied sciences kind of be at the core of my doctoral dissertation. So while at the CFL, uh, my research is chiefly aimed at trying to better understand ecosystem resilience in the various stable states with uh, those ecosystems can fall in, particularly for pelagic dominant food webs or open water systems. And we can best illustrate this uh, stable state and ecosystem resilience concept with the famous ball and cup model, where that ball represents the current state the ecosystem is in, and those various valleys represent potential alternative stable states that system can be in. Now those hills are unstable equilibria and sort of a threshold that ball needs to get over uh, in order to fall within that next stable state. Now a lot of these lakes in northern Wisconsin, they're cold, deep, clear, and clean. Uh, so I kind of conceptualize them as starting off in open water state one, where there's a native species assemblage and there's an ecological balance within the system. Uh, sort of a checks and balances sort of thing. There are no, um, nothing's too out of tune, too out of whack. There's sort of harmony amongst the species. However, that ball can move along the gradient through large perturbations or sort of change or drastic events. And uh, most commonly throughout the world, those perturbations come in the form of invasions. And more specifically for my study lakes, they came in the form of a rainbow smelt invasion in the early 1980s. Now that drastically changed the system and uh, moved it over to what I've been calling open water state number two, where now rainbow smelt are the dominant biomass within the system and native species such as yellow perch have been suppressed in numbers. Uh, walleye recruitment has been on a steady decline since rainbow smelt invaded some of these lakes and some culturally and economically important fish like Lake Herring or Cisco have even been extirpated within this new alternative state due to the rainbow smelt invasion. So from this uh, perspective, it's really no good from uh, either management or the stakeholders. The uh, fish species that people like catching, like harvesting, and uh, that managers try and manage for are no longer in the system or are really on the uh, decline within these systems. So it's really not a good desirable state. So our broad overall goal here is to try and shift that ecosystem back closer to its original state where theory says the resiliency to future perturbations and changes should be much higher. And just very shortly, our biomanipulations will come in the form of native species stocking and manual removal of those invasive rainbow smelts. Uh, but really the goal here is to try and get that state back to one that is native species dominant and have all those negative effects uh, that rainbow smelt uh, yield on the population uh, via their strong competitory and predatory interactions to kind of control those negative effects or mitigate them as much as possible. And the broad overall goal of this is trying to see if will this hold for the long term? Will we be able to achieve that ecological balance and kind of step away from the system and just let it go within its natural path after we get in there? Well, this summer I wasn't just spending my entire time out on the water collecting data or musky fishing my personal time. I was also the graduate fellows representative. And here's a picture of the 2019 program. And we unfortunately weren't able to create this program this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are some restrictions placed on Trout Lake Station and we more or less just had a couple of grad students up here for the summer. So the fellows had to work uh, basically from home or remotely. So, we were gonna predict before COVID that we would be in fellow state number one. These students would have an ex awesome summer in Northern Wisconsin. They would gain highly valuable field and research experience. And more importantly, they would be able to build upon that camaraderie that Trout Lake Station is really known for. 
Well, as you all know, COVID-19 happened and uh, when planning this with our supervisors, we were really afraid that I was going to move that ball so far along this gradient to one that would uh, be full of a lackluster experience. It would be extremely difficult to communicate amongst all the fellows with emails, text messages, phone calls. It's just a very hard media to communicate over and extremely impersonal. There will be no camping trips, no bonfires, no fishing outings, none of that. Well, thankfully, that ball was not so far along the gradient, thanks to the awesome work of Diana, Cassie, Levi, Mike, and Roger, our all-star fellow cast this year. Um, not only did these fellows all gain very valuable research experience, we also had some pretty fun and personable Zoom meetings. And most importantly, all five of these fellows were extremely productive, and they're able to put forth some extremely sound research that I'm super excited for them to be able to share with you guys. So with that, I would like to express many thanks to the Judea and the Lane family for all their continued support uh, for the Center for Limnology and Trout Lake Station, as well as all supporters for the Center Limnology Trout Lake Station. I would like to recognize Greg Sass, my mentor and advisor for all his uh, kind of leadership and instilling the mentorship qualities that I uh, benefited from through him into me. And I would like to especially recognize our five fellows. You guys were extremely resilient and robust this summer. You did some awesome work and I'm super excited for you to be able to share that with these families. And to the families, uh, please get back to us with emails. We would love to answer questions. It's pretty unfortunate we weren't able to have the luncheon this year, so we do have to communicate through this format. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, just anything at all, please get back to us and we really look forward to communicating more in the future. Thank you all very much.